So I just want to talk briefly with Alexis Gideon. I'm also going to introduce you to Celeste Newhouse. Uh, and then we'll have the Jenks Archive Trio talk to you briefly up here before we conclude. And then, you know, break out the beer and the pierogies. We got some pierogies for you guys. I'm very excited it about is. the pierogies. Yeah. <laughs> so Alexis Gideon here uh, has the piece behind us. His uh, background is also music and has now transferred into this sort of new genre where he creates these amazing stop motion animations. Uh, he also shows the work normally during performances. So he'll screen the film while performing and the narrative is him singing and rapping the entire uh, length of the film and uh, playing all the instruments at the same time. So it's pretty impressive. He will be doing a performance here in October. Um, so I highly encourage you to come. It's really an amazing experience to encounter. Alexis, can you give us the rundown? <laughs> yeah, th I feel like you've said it all. But thank, thank you so much, Casey. Yeah, on October 23rd, I'll be performing this piece, Video Music 3, Floating Oceans. And uh, you see here's the projection of the piece. And then there's a couple installations from the piece and some stills from the piece on the wall over here that you guys Welcome to check out. Um, this particular piece is kind of about um, the oscillation between the, the dream world and the mundane world and when those lines get blurred and sort of um, culture's loss of, of um, the spiritual being accessible in an everyday. And very uh, summed up quick for the, keep the pace of this talk moving. But I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, October 23rd, I'll be performing this piece here. It's, Please come back and check it out. Yeah, thanks, Alexis. Um, and I also want to introduce you. Yeah. Thanks. So. On my other side, I've got Celeste Newhouse. Oh, really? It's yeah. just for the video. Yeah. So Celeste is another recent transplant. I knew both of these guys. We all crossed paths in Chicago a few years ago. We, at different points, lived in Chicago. So I became familiar with Celeste's work then, and it's been great to have her in Pittsburgh for the last year or so. Um, so uh, Celeste created lots of work for this show. We have the sculpture over here, the two paintings that flank this room, and then the work on that wing over there. So Celeste, you can see, works through 2D, 3D, and she'll also have some video, so 4D, uh, which will be on the first floor later in October. Uh, Celeste, you want to quickly tell us the content, everything that you've ever done. Can you tell okay. us? Ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, and also, if you want to ask a question or something to supplement, that would be great. Okay. So, um, my work starts with the materials, um, and what my intention is is to transform our experience of the materials that um, are common to celebrations of holidays or birthdays uh, into something that has a relationship to light and geometry, because both light and geometry. Um, factor into the way in which people have understood their place in the cosmos. So I'm sort of fascinated by the way that um, we conceive of that and the cosmologies and how those evolve through time and the parallels in um, different cultures that exist. So for example, this inverted triangle is a response to um, another piece I made that was this sort of fire-inspired um, piece that was um, referencing this sort of platonic ancient Greek idea of the elements being represented by geometric shapes like fire, earth, water. Um, and this piece over here is, um, it's called eth etheric double. And so it's also kind of riffing on the idea of ether, the, the sort of mysterious uh, cosmic force of ether as being able to be represented by a shape. So those paintings over there are um, abstractions of moon cycles, and I've used things like melted birthday candles, um, crepe paper. And I see all of these things, like these holidays, as sort of these cycles, these points in time that sort of mark our transition around the sun. So Celeste's work um, often employs, almost entirely employs uh, materials that have been discarded. 
often materials of celebration. Um, it's Once you get in there and look at her material list, it's really eye-opening. So I'd encourage you to um, take a look at each label for her work and just look at the materials. It's really fascinating. Um, lastly, we have the Jenks Archive. Thank you, Celeste. So Jenks Archive. Jenks Archive consists of Ben Kinsley, Jerston Crosby, and Jess Langley. Um, yeah, woo! So these guys, again, at one point lived in Pittsburgh, have all recently left, but they miss it so much that they're back and they're ready to talk to you about Jenks. Sure. So um, I'll try to be brief. Uh, the project's downstairs, and you'll see a variety of things. There's a two channel video installation, and there's uh, some documentation of of some, uh, some events we've done. There's a sandwich board and there's a website. Uh, we also have a illustrated uh, publication that we just created that's in the uh, bookstore for sale. So there's many pieces to this project and there's a lot of research that goes behind it. So make sure you read the text on the wall and also look on the website. There's a lot there. But to be brief, this project came about uh, the three of us were we're together uh, listening to a recording that I found in the uh, Smithsonian Institute Save Our Sounds archive, which was recorded by Harry Smith, who's a famous filmmaker, ethnomusicologist, mystic, kind of uh, magician guy. If you know who he is, you, you know what I'm talking about. He's responsible for collecting and, and creating the anthology of American folk music, which you know kind of revamped the, the uh, folk revival scene in the 60s. He was interested in looking and collecting lots of things, including sound uh, and all sorts of other material, looking for kind of a, a, a universal pattern for, for human culture. And so what we were listening to specifically were some recordings that he had made in his hotel room when he lived in the Chelsea Hotel of just people coming into his room singing songs from memory. And the things that triggered uh, this project really were some, some songs that people were remembering from childhood on the schoolyard, and there were these dirty, naughty songs that they remembered. They're adults trying to remember these songs and rhymes that used to sing to each other on the playground. We started thinking about, well, what, I guess, song, we don't really remember songs. The three of us couldn't really remember songs, and maybe that's not as big of a part of American culture as it used to be, but what we were wondering what still existed in that way. So we, um, we started thinking about jokes, and Jerson here is from Alabama, and in Alabama, he remembered this, this tradition of in throwing jokes back and forth, this kind of duel you play with friends, or you're insulting people, but it's also kind of in jest. Uh, he called that janks. And Jesse and I are from Ohio, and we never even heard that term before. And, and then Jerson had all these examples that he actually says in the, in the video installation, so you'll see that, uh, that we had never heard before, the kind of ways of doing this. And so we wondered if there was a culturally, geographically, locally specific way that you might do this in every given place in the world. And so we, came, we started this impossible project of traveling around the world collecting insult humor in all these different places. So far, we've been, we, did, we, we launched the project in Philadelphia. We did a collection in Mexico City, one in Helsinki, Finland, Belfast, Northern Ireland, and now we're doing one in Pittsburgh. And so in the video installation, you'll see snippets, a selection of all the things we've collected in that structure taking these, these, we just go around, ask people, how do you insult each other here? Can you, can you insult us? Can you insult the camera? We collect that, we throw it in the archive, and we put it back in a dueling tradition. So there's different languages, and there's uh, uh, subtitles, and it's putting put back into a duel. So you're in the middle of that dueling video. Um, something that we've learned, they call it janks in, in uh, Alabama, um, in Belfast, they're called slaggings. And um, Mexico City, there's a tradition called the albur. The United States has a tradition of um, uh, the dozens. Uh, there's even a, a, a Greenland tradition of this like singing song duel. Uh, so there, every place has this dueling tradition, and they call them different words. In Pittsburgh, we learned last night, it's called rippins. Rippin', scorching, flamin'. <laughs> Kill them. Kill them. And then there's something we learned from, and uh, well, the girl from Baltimore said, Joni. Joni. So every place has a different way of talking about this. So we're yeah. thinking about it as like a folk, oral history folk archive. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. Jenks is this the general term that we use to sort of encapsulate what all we're looking for. 
And so it's, it's kind of an obscure term, but it allows us to kind of define it as we want. And once you have, once we amass this kind of archive that we have, sorry, it's kind of what do you do with it? And so what we're doing is sort of trend, pulling from the archive and finding new ways to represent it to the public. So we have a, a video installation. Uh, we have the uh, Jenks Illustrated. We asked artists to kind of pull from the archive and illustrate uh, some of these jokes, which are very visual, sometimes very surreal. And all of that's collected in Jenks Illustrated, which is for sale as of this week downstairs. And it features several uh, local artists, um, yeah. artists that live in Pittsburgh or from Pittsburgh. And also the website is another way to represent it, which is also downstairs on a monitor for yeah. you to check out. There's an archive on the website where we categorize everything by keywords. So there's themes that come out, uh, different. Like we learned just in Pittsburgh, we've gotten school bus jokes that we haven't received since then. So there's like these different tags and we categorize them. So, and there's actually, we're tracking history. We're asking people, where did you first hear this? They say, oh, my dad used to say that to me. Or my uncle told me that. Or the kids on the bus told me that. So we're trying to kind of track the origins as well. But we're also not really uh, anthropologists. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we're giving it our best shot. That's good. That's good. All right. Thank you, Ben. Um, all right. So the Jenks Archive is on view downstairs for the next two weeks of the show. You can see their video installation of dueling jokes going back and forth. Um, they'll also be out and about collecting more Jenks, right, throughout Pittsburgh. We'll do the strip district around noon. Tomorrow. We're going to be here from 3 to 5. So keep an eye out, give them a joke, an insulting joke. I also want to point out that Drew Drogi, who is not related to me but does have the same last name, is a part of this show as well, and his work is on YouTube. So by the door over there, you'll see cards directing you to the link. He created a video. He's really well known for doing these impersonations of Chloe Savini, and they're incredibly funny and uh, we had him do a video for the show uh, because Chloe was here in the last year or so filming a television series and wrote this article about how great Pittsburgh was and uh, wrote it for Marie Claire magazine. So it was really filled with great content, you can imagine. Um, so <laughs> uh, Drew took this and, and responded to it with one of his videos. Uh, it's on YouTube. It'll be up indefinitely, so you can find it there. Uh, there are, again, multiple featured presentations. Dave Bernabo has a light lab scheduled here next Saturday, so I hope you can make that as well. Um, and again, Alexis will perform in October. So thank you all so much for coming out. Please enjoy the show and talk to the artists and have a good night. <laughs>